I've always been a very physically strong, sporty person. I was a school leader, a young Triple J radio presenter, a quantum TV reporter. Curiosity and compassion have been key drivers of my life. I feel that I've contributed, and by many life measures, I feel that I've done quite well. Until January 2016, a bit of lower back pain, constipation, suspected ovarian cancer. After five hours of a debilitating 50-year-old surgical procedure, I was given less than 50-50 chance of being alive in five years. Can you imagine how that felt? And many women have exactly that. You get your diagnosis, you get the surgery, it's called debulking surgery. It is so ancient, but still the best our wonderful surgeons can offer us is a very small chance of staying alive. After that, for me, six rounds of brutal chemotherapy in an attempt to wipe out what the surgeon couldn't get. But what sealed my fate was a terrifying day in September 2017 when my ovarian cancer metastasized to my front right lobe and nearly killed me. Despite urgent neurosurgery, more chemo, that meant that I was stage four. And that, in our world, is incurable terminal ovarian cancer. Now look, I don't feel that I've got the right to better care than other cancer sufferers, but when women like me and Kristen, who you're about to meet, face such a persistently diabolical prognosis, it's hard not to feel kind of forgotten. I mean, there's so much stacked against us. Firstly, our cancer is down there in that private, unspoken part of a woman. It is, in fact, the sexiest part of us. It is at the cradle of life. But we're embarrassed often to speak about it, and that embarrassment is what can stop women speaking up to their doctors, stop their husbands encouraging them to go to the doctor if they think something's wrong down there. Other things against us, in my opinion, is that we are very few in number. There's only 1,500 of us each year that get diagnosed, so it's very hard for us to form a big army of teal advocates, as our breast cancer sisters have been able to do so well in pink. Oh, the other thing in our way is that we die, and we die very quickly. Like Liberal Senator Jeannie Ferris, Jeannie Ferris, who you mentioned, Prime Minister, Jeannie died 18 months after her diagnosis. In that time, she fought in this very building. What she actually wanted was a big gynae cancer centre. Women like Jeannie Ferris, women like me, leave behind our families, our communities, our jobs. And even though I'm 60 now, I still have a whole lot of potential to live. And I'm not gonna to get to fulfill that potential. I married a beautiful man last year and created a big new family. And I'm gonna be robbed of that family. The Christmases together, the Easters, the birthdays, the graduations, the new babies all the love and wisdom that I have to share with them will be stolen, as will my chance to support my 22-year-old daughter into motherhood. That nightmare keeps me awake at night. Now, I'm not a beggar, and I hate coming here begging for your support. And Prime Minister, I'd like to thank you for the support that you have shown us. But I just need you to know that all of the women like me, we actually feel that we are on our knees in trying to advance this cancer. And fundamentally, that means we need significant sums of money. Not little bits, we need big sums of money. We know that the young researchers who are in this field, ovarian cancer, have to end up leaving this cancer field because all the money's in breast cancer. And while I applaud the magnificent advances that have been made for breast cancer, if our young researchers, who could nail this disease for us, have to leave and follow the money, then I feel despair, and it's happened. I know very particular researchers who've been in that situation. Prime Minister, while I welcome the $27 million that you recently granted to breast care nurses, I wish we didn't have to do that, but I would like to let you know that that kind of money, a significant chunk of money, would make a real difference to research for us. To me, care is wonderful, but research and solutions is what I need. I need our leaders to stop just backing winners. 
We've discovered today that four times as much money is spent on breast cancer as it is on our cancer. And while that is wonderful, and who would in any way wish that not to be the great 90% success for breast cancer, we need to be 90% women, not 46% women. We need you as our political leaders to make sound decisions so that women like me don't have to drag our sick bodies. And I finished, I'd started my last round of chemo on Thursday, so I'm, I'm right as we speak on a bit of a steroid low. Um, so I'm not very well. We need you to make sound decisions so that women like us don't have to drag our sick bodies year after year using our last breath so that our daughters, your daughters, your nieces, your sisters, your grandchildren don't have to face the lonely misery, and it is lonely, to have an ovarian cancer diagnosis in Australia. That's my story. I hope it's had some meaning for you. And on that note, I would very much like to introduce you to a young woman whose bravery is astounding. She's 26, she's living with this disease, and her name is Kristen Larson.